Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you excited to be in God's presence? Can you put your hands together? Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Father, we love you.
Welcome to the Elevation Church London. We are so glad you could join us for service today. Whether you're watching right here in London or from other parts of the UK, we bid you a very warm welcome. We have inspiring testimonies and a time of heartfelt worship for you to look forward to. Be expectant of a move of God in your life. Have a fulfilling time in God's presence. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. Uh, let us pray. I'd like us to start by um, thanking God. Um, Psalm 100 verse 4, message translation. And that with the password, thanks. I want us to really activate that. I want us to, to start by just thanking Him and thanking Him deliberately, thanking Him for the Accelerate Conference, thanking Him for our families, thanking Him for the United Kingdom, thanking Him for the, the news of the lockdown. You know, it, it's almost gone. <laughs> it's gone, you know. Thanking Him for his mercies, his loving kindness. I want us to press press into that prayer point now. Press press into that prayer point of giving thanks in a song, in understanding, in tongues, any 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 way that it wells up in your spirit. Uh, let's press into that prayer point and give thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We we're, st we're still going to be giving thanks. We're still going to be giving thanks. I want us to, to you know, thank God deliberately for you know leadership for the the Prime Minister and the mem members of Parliament. Um, the the pandemic is still raging, but you know we are we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. The, the vaccination exercise, you know, it's been successful. We need to thank God for the way the journey has been. The journey has been so far. But let's just thank God. And, and knowing that and deliberately knowing that as we are thanking God for this, He's going to do much more, you know, in our land. He's going to do much more for us in the United Kingdom. And, you know, He would use them as our leaders, you know, to, to, to really chart a course and to make everything better and lead the United Kingdom into His will. So I want us to just thank God specifically for for leadership. Let's press into that prayer point. In, in Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. We are still going to be thanking God. And I want us to thank God for the experiences. Um, some of us have gone through tough times during this um, uh, past year. And you might be wondering what is there to thank God for. Uh, I mean, you might be counting the numerous things to complain about. But I want us to thank God that we are even alive. If, it's, if you are looking for a job, thank God that you have a qualification that makes you eligible to get a job. If, if you're looking for the fruit of the womb, or you're looking for your business, a new idea blossoming in your life, thank God that you are even married, or thank God that you even have a business, that you have something. So let, let's reflect. I want us to just think back so that we can thank God. Let, let's, let's pivot from, from you know, you know, trying to just put forth, you know, maybe complaints and just seeing what is wrong. Let's just think, and it might be hard for some of us now, but let's just reflect, pause, and calmly think. Thank God for your life, for the salvation, for for networks, for for relationships, for thank God that He is because of Him that it is no worse than whatever it is right now. I want to just press into that prayer point.
And let's bring our prayers to a close. Let's bring our prayers to a close. Now we're going to be thanking God for today. We are, we are gathered in, at, at his feet. We are waiting to hear the word, you know, and thanking God now for the blessing we are going to get. Uh, and that we're knowing that at the end of today's service, we're going to be better than we came. So, so let's thank God. And let's thank God for that. Let's thank God for that. Let's thank God for that. Let's press into that prayer point. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. Thank you, Lord, for testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for we know that with you, we are going to experience far more than we can ask, think, or even imagine. Lord, as we have entered your presence with the password of thanks, and we have thanked you for so many things today, Lord, we are asking that you do far more than we can ask, think, or imagine in our lives. And that at the end of today, we have every cause to give you all the praise and come back again to say thank. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I relocated to the United Kingdom in late 2019, a few months after my wedding. I had great expectations, but instead, I went through a series of challenges, which in hindsight, were necessary to prepare me for all that God had planned for me. I resigned from a promising job at a multinational and left Nigeria for the unknown in the United Kingdom. Little did I know that I was going to stay at home for 10 months before getting my first job. I encountered more rejections than I could count while applying to several companies, but I held on to God and continued to push. As God would have it, I got my first job on the same day that I had my first and only interview in late 2020. The role was an initial six-month contract with a leading biotech company in the United Kingdom and was a step up from what I was doing in Nigeria. I got a further three-month extension after my initial contract elapsed. At this stage, I started looking out for more permanent roles and the rejection started coming back. I didn't know how it would happen. But I trusted God and resolved that I wouldn't be worried. Then a former colleague who I was hardly in touch with reached out to me on LinkedIn about a senior marketing role in the United Kingdom branch of a Fortune 500 company. I applied and went through the interview process. To the glory of God, I was successful and got an offer two months to the expiration of my extended contract. To God alone be all the glory. Somebody bless the Lord. Give him praise. Give him the fruit of your lips. I will come to his presence with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. He had a bar shot and he had a shot. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures. Pleasures forevermore. We all worship you, we all bow before you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we were made to worship. We were made to worship. We bring it all. Just my, my affection. My affection. My affection.
the Lord At all times I was made to worship I was made to bless your name Somebody worship Would you like a more interactive Sunday service experience? Just join us on Zoom for a deeper experience of God's presence via the link now displayed. There's great content for your kids aged 9 years and younger on our YouTube channel at Elevation London. Just type Seeds in the search bar and click the link to start your service. Also see details of services on Zoom for preteens and teenagers displayed on your screen. If you're joining our online service for the first time, we say a big welcome to you. We have a five minutes guest hangout immediately after this service. Please use the link now showing to join the hangout. You can give your offering and tithe via a secure online portal. Please click on this link to give. The Elevation Church London operates a small group system where members can connect and engage to foster spiritual maturity to serve and to try physically. To join a virtual small group, they send an email to smallgroups at elevationuk.org. God gave me double for my shame. Twins. It's the biggest birthday gift from God a car and a house. I almost lost both eyes to cancer. It restored my sight. New job with five times my previous pay package. I can't believe I got the visa. God is good. He gave me the contract that I wasn't even qualified for. His grace covered my shortcomings and I received a double promotion. He calmed the storm in my family. He restored my broken marriage. He gave me four fully paid scholarships. He lifted me from the slum to my own house. He multiplied my businesses. Now, I employ. He just changed the entire narrative of my whole life. Praise God. God is faithful. There is nothing God cannot do. It is all God. Glory to Jesus. No doubt, greater is he that is in me, for I am evidently powered by love, by he who daily guides me in the path of righteousness. To grow in faith, to live by the honor code, and gain access to an everyday supernatural life. But there's more. Stay tuned throughout this month as you sharpen your focus and bounce back even after adversity. It is time to press forward with greater faith. Bless your name today. We celebrate you and we give you glory and praise as we set this time apart uh, for you to ride upon and bless every life, everyone uh, partaking of this service today. We receive your grace upon them afresh. Wherever everyone is joining this service, we ask, Lord, that you fill us afresh with your spirit in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the many blessings of the past week. We thank you uh, for, for this this, this new week, we thank you and we ask, Father, that you charge your power, your, your word with power today. Let your power flow through your word. Let your grace flow through your word and let everyone that is participating of this service right now be blessed. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we give you glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody you want to appreciate Jesus for the be benefit of being a part of his presence today. Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. And I want to welcome you very, very specially to this service. I know that the month of July started on a great note for you. And I believe that every day, every week of this month, you will have a testimony in, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so I wanted to call your family members, call, call your friends, your colleagues, um, get, get people into this service, send somebody a WhatsApp message, uh, put, put a call to somebody, let them know that it's a time uh, to be a part of uh, the teaching of God's word in this service today. Wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice, joining this service in different parts of the world, uh, I, I want you to know that God is alive and well in your life. And the Bible says it gives strength to the weary. 
and to them that have no might, it increase strength. So whatever you may be going through right now, as we get into the word of God today, I want you to put all that weariness away from you and focus on the word of God. The Bible says they look unto him and they were lightened and they were not ashamed. I pray this season, shame will be far from you in the name of Jesus. The second half of 2021 will bring goodness and grace into your life in Jesus' name. By the way, the past week was great, isn't it? Uh, the, the, the Accelerate Conference was really, really powerful. And I know that some of us are still living, you know, in and relieving the realities of the Accelerate Conference. I want to encourage you to get online on your you know, YouTube platform, whatever you get our messages from, and listen again and again, binge watch, and just relieve the experience because every word spoken, every prophetic word, every promise of God's word will come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. We we'll start a new series of teachings today that will attack greater faith. Greater faith, you know, coming to 2021, uh, God spoke to our heart that this is a season of greater. He said, the, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And for us to be able to press into that word, this second half of the year, we need a greater faith. Uh, somebody say, my faith is growing. Say, my faith is becoming bigger. Uh, say, my trust in God is becoming deeper. In the name of Jesus, uh, that, that will be your testimony this second half. In the name of Jesus. And if there's anything uh, that eluded you in the first half of the year that has been credited into your destiny for this year, 2021, I pray for you today that this second half, your faith will attract them into your life and destiny in the precious name of Jesus. So we're running this new teaching series and uh, uh, the objective is to help you appropriate God's word, God's promises, and every prophetic word that has been spoken over your life in the past uh, as you go into the second half of 2021. Uh, the, the need for you to release your faith like never before to walk in the realities of the things that God has promised us. Uh, let me start out by saying that Faith has a lot to do with what I believe. What I believe. Faith has a lot to do with where I'm channeling my trust. I remember uh, 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 many years ago when my kids were still very young. I mean, they, 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 they're both teenagers now, my two girls. But when they were very young, we used to go around in parks, in different parts of the world, Six Flags in America, uh, you know, uh, 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 Disneyland in Paris, different places as opportunities presented itself those days just to go on holidays and then we go on different rides and they were always very excited about getting on rides, all kinds of rides. The, 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 you know, the confidence with which I used to put them on those rides was that these rides have been tried and tested. The companies that set up these parks, they have integrity, They've been proven over the years that if I put my, my daughters on this ride, uh, they, they, they're not going to fall off. Uh, the, the ride will not stop mid here, and then they won't be able to come down, and they'll be fainting and vomiting and all that. Uh, you know, they, 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 I'm just saying this to help somebody to understand today that we live our lives by faith ordinarily. There's an element of trust that when I sit on a chair, it's not going to collapse behind me or beneath me. When I get on a ride, uh, I'm going to have a good time because uh, the, 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 there was an antecedent. There's a brand that I can believe. When I purchase something, you know, from, from a, a brand, a, a store, I, I have the confidence that what I'm purchasing is what I'm going to get. And we all go out every day, get in the car, you drive your car, you just believe it's not going to break down. You, you're not going to have a flat tire. You're, you're just going to go. You check everything. You feel it's okay. You have confidence. That's how we live as humans. We live with trust, with, with confidence, uh, knowing that certain things will go a certain way. But sometimes in life, our confidence and our trust is challenged when we don't get the desirable outcome. And that's when we start to second guess or doubt people doubt products, doubt services. And when we bring this to our faith in God, sometimes we have reasons to doubt. Maybe because we, 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 we thought some things would go a certain way and it, they, they didn't go that, that, that way. And then we start to doubt whether God is for us or against us, whether God 
really can actually live up to the expect, expectation that we have of him or that, you know, that what he has promised us, he will be able to do. This, this past accelerated conference, for instance, was a major faith booster for me because we saw the end of God like never before. We saw raw healings. We saw great manifestations. God confirming his word within 24 hours. These things happen for God uh, to, to, to step us to the next level of our faith. There are many testimonies that I had of words that were spoken during this past conference, and those words were accomplished in 24 hours. A lady heard a word that said, uh, you know what, uh, the, the people who are your adversaries holding you down, you are soon going to zoom past them, and they will congratulate you. And that same night, <laughs> the person who has been standing against her at work, limiting her progress and all that, that same night, a few minutes past midnight, she got an email saying, you have now been promoted, and now you are the one that's going to be supervising this person that was supervising you and that is making life difficult for you. How do you want to explain some of the things that God does in our lives, in our church, in our, in, you know, in our families? These things are faith boosters for each and every one of us. And even when you haven't seen the end of God yet, the promises that are written in the word of God are the things that assure us that if he did it before, he can do it again. So uh, uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 11 verse 1, the Bible says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. The substance of things hoped for. What you are hoping for, then you can get a substance of it. One translation says, faith is the title deed. Title deed is what you get when you purchase maybe a landed property. Sometimes you, you may not have, uh, be, I mean, you may not be able to capture the landed property and say, I have taken ownership. But you are given a title deed, a certificate of occupancy that is signed. Wherever you go, even when you enter a bank and you say, I have this title deed on this property, I want to uh, borrow money from here, I need this to be the collateral. They look at it, they verify it, they haven't seen the land, but if this, according to the land registry of the city, of the nation, if this is verified, then truly you have a land and on the premise of this, we can, we can, we can lend out money to you. That's how it works. Faith is this confident assurance that we have in God that he will perform according to his antecedent. He will perform according to his promises and we can hold him to it and on the basis of that confidence, we start to act in line uh, with what he has promised. Uh, Hebrews 4 and verse 2 uh, which is where, where many people, you know, get it wrong. Say, for indeed, the, the gospel was preached to us as well as unto them, but the word which they had did not profit them. It did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Many people claim that the word of God is not producing for them, but the problem really is that the word is not being mixed with confident assurance, with illicit uh, uh you know, confident proclamation and pro pro confident action. When those things are not there, it means that the word is not being mixed with faith in your heart. And so it will not produce. It will not bring the right effect. He said the same word was preached to us as unto them, but the word uh, they heard did not profit them. It didn't bring effect, the expected effect, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Ladies and gentlemen, for this uh, uh, the season that we live, if we need anything at all, we need faith. We need to boost our faith. We need to move uh, to a next level of faith. Faith is trust and confidence in God that fuels specific action, thinking, and lifestyle. Can I say that one more time? Faith is trust and confidence in God that fuels specific action, thinking, and lifestyle. You cannot claim that you have faith and it doesn't affect how you think. You cannot faith, claim that you have faith and it doesn't affect your emotion. It does not affect your action. The Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. When you have faith, 
that I may not have anything in my pocket right now, uh, but according to the word of God, uh, I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And when, if I'm blessed, then money is just a small part of the blessing. <laughs> so I act like a blessed person. I think like a blessed, blessed person because I have been blessed. I have been blessed already. It is a natural expression of the trust of a believer's renewed heart. When my heart is renewed and I'm trusting, there's a natural expression. Yeah, natural expression. Faith is the proof that we have received God's love. If I know that God is truly my father and is, is you know, he loves me to beat, then I act it out like a child who has a loving, real loving physical father who is willing to take care of all his or her needs and is willing to pay the school fees, willing to feed, willing to accommodate. That kind of child will not be unnecessarily, you know, uh, sorrowful and saying, I lack everything. Even if the father is not at home, he knows that I have this kind of father who can always pull through. Can somebody say after me today, say, my father in heaven, is always watching over me. He knows my needs before I even can think them out. And is always there to meet me at every point of need. Say amen if you believe that. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. That's how our mind is configured when we're working by faith. So we breathe in God's love and we exhale, we exhale faith. We, bring, we breathe in God's word, we exhale faith. We breathe in covenant promises from the word of God and what we're excelling out is faith, raw faith, that will help us to reconfigure how we think uh, about what is possible and what is impossible and the kind of action that we take based on what we believe to be possible. Based on what we believe to, to, to be possible. It's our response to a love that has made our doubts weak and chased our former suitors fear and sadness away from us. That's what faith does. Faith is your response to uh, uh, this, this new love that has made your doubt or that will make your doubt very weak, you know, and chased your old suitors, <laughs> sadness, fear, all away from you because when faith is being battered in your heart, what happens is that you start to think differently. You start to see things differently. It's hard to see things differently. In the life of Jesus, uh, there, there were places that Jesus went and he could not do any mighty works. The Bible talks about, he said, for the reason of their unbelief. So faith allows for God's purpose to be established on earth. That there are things that God wants to do and he's just looking for you. He's looking for me. He's looking for people who can believe that he's able to do uh, such things through them. And when God finds you faithful, what happens is that you, you start to see him move in unusual dimension through you. In Hebrews 11, which is the all of fame for faith people, we see the different people that God mentioned there. Uh, uh, all kinds of people. This Samson, Barak, you know, spoke about all kinds of people. Moses, you know, by faith, he, he, he looked away from the benefits of being in the king's palace in Egypt and chose to suffer affliction, the Bible says, with the people of God. There are all kinds of, of faith actions that were taken in, in, you know, in, in, in the Old Testament that the Bible referred to in Hebrews 11 there. And it speaks to the fact that faith for God's purpose, uh, faith allows for God's purpose to be established on her. Will God find you faithful this season to establish his purpose through you because you are willing to put your faith on the line and you are willing to trust him for what he wants to do. Glory be to Jesus. So even when a need exists, our faith is not primarily for needs to be met. It is for the kingdom of God to be established. It's for the will of God to be done. But even where the need exists, God reframes, you know, the need in the context of the kingdom. How do I mean? And I'm still laying some foundations here. This being the first teaching of this series. Even when a need exists, God reframes the need to fit the context of his will and of his, the need of his kingdom. For instance, Abraham needs, you know, 
needed a child, a son. Yeah, in the book of Genesis. But God actually needed a generation that Israel may come out of his loins. So when God will answer his prayer and be moved by Abraham's faith, it was for his own kingdom agenda, what he needed. And a lot of the time, when we feel stranded in the need that we have, we should console ourselves in the fact that I am an integral part of God's kingdom. So this need is not just about me. God has a, a way that he wants to use this need that I have. And that should even build, build faith in my heart. Moses needs restoration. God wants to deliver a nation. Anna needs a, a son. There's one Anna out there that needs a son right now. But God needs a prophet. And that's how Samuel will come. Uh, according to, uh, you know, the, the story that we, we read in 1 Samuel about the prophet Samuel. Faith for God's will uh, to be done is, is what, what is the most important faith that we should have. You know, for God's will to be done. Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane saying, not my will, but yours be done. I know if it's left to me, I don't want this to happen. But if that's what you want, have it your way. Faith in God is for fulfillment, you know, for the fulfillment of destiny. When I have faith uh, for, for a career path, faith for business, I should think about what God wants to do through that business. Yeah, I, I know I'm going to get richer if I have a big business that is thriving, but God wants to build his kingdom through that business. This, this, this is a, a foundation upon which you can build your faith and it gets stronger because it does not depend on you. You have yielded to God that, I know I have this need, and that's the mistake many people make. You make your need an end in itself. Your need is not an end in itself. Your need is a, is a means to an end. I need a husband. God wants to build a family through me and my husband so that his kingdom can progress and his name can be glorified. If you see it like that, then you know that you have a good father who is always thinking of you and your need is not isolated to yourself. He also has a need. And through that kind of thinking, you can hold God by faith, knowing that he's more eager to do what you want him do, uh, to do. Matthew 6 and verse 33, the Bible says, But seek uh, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Uh, what does it mean to seek God first? Or seek uh, 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 his kingdom first? His, his will, his purpose, what he wants done. How I wish that many more believers will be more focused on what God wants done rather than what we want done. Because when our will aligns with his will, uh, there's no other way to fast track miracles to happen more than that. There's nothing that is as easier, to, I mean, that is, is, that, that is easier to do in this world than what God is eager to do. May uh, your will start to align with his will. May the things that you are trusting him to do become the things that he really wants to do in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, believe in amen for that. Praise God. As we go on in, in this teaching today, I, I, I want to help you to locate where you are in your faith journey right now. I want to help you to locate where you are in your faith journey. You know, uh, Jesus categorized our faith level at least in three dimensions. One, we call it no faith. Two, little faith. And three, great faith. Those were the things we saw in the words of Jesus. There were people he dealt with and he told them, how is it that you have no faith? But there's some of that kind of people he dealt with and he said, oh, you have little faith. And some of that people he dealt with and he says, wow, I've not seen faith like this. This is great faith. You know, and in different parts of, uh, of our lives, we will find ourselves in situations where in certain areas of life, I, I can say I have great faith there. In some of that area of life, I have a little faith. And in some of that area of life, uh, I have no faith at all. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. A, a lot of business people that I've interacted with, a lot of the time have great faith <laughs> to build great businesses. So you see the, the, the vigor with which they pursue, pursue business success. Go for meetings, study, and all that. That same person who is studying hard 
learning the rudiments of this business, uh, marketing and, you know, recruiting and going hard. Some of the time, you realize that they put zero or no, I mean, or, or, or little effort in building their marriage. So what, what do you see? It simply means that I have faith that God can turn my business around, but I have no faith that God can turn my marriage around. So you see people who have given up on their marriage, but they are still shooting very high in their career. Sometimes you see people who, who, you know, who, who have given up about their health, but they are still shooting very high when it comes to business. Or some people who, who are faith to be healed, they've seen God heal them before, but they struggle in their finances. When it comes to healing, oh, they say, oh, of course, God is a healer. God can heal me. But when it comes to their finances, because they lack understanding, uh, both of the natural way finances work, or they lack understanding of how the word of God, what the word of God says about finances, and they're not pursuing understanding, you just see that their faith collapses, you know, when it comes to finances. But when it comes to faith uh, for healing, they, they're not doing badly. Uh, uh, you need to find yourself wherever you are right now. It's about self-awareness. How am I doing with faith for finances? How am I doing with faith for healing? How am I doing with faith for relationships? How am I doing with faith for academic progress? Yeah. Because somebody may be very good with relationship, but when it comes, I mean, maybe I'm speaking to a student now, an undergrad, you, 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 you have many suitors, but when it comes to, to, to your courses in school, you're banging them one after the other. Yeah. But this is a time for you to be able to release your faith across board. A child of God is supposed to be wholesome. Because the same power that heals sicknesses is the same power that, you know, empowers you for a higher level in your finances. It's the same grace that empowers you to, to represent God in your marriage or your relationship. Say amen, somebody. So it's very important that you understand that you need to be able to catch yourself. We're talking about greater faith. Where do I need greater faith this season? Do I need greater faith to work out my marriage? Do I need greater faith to resolve this health issue that is failing? Uh, do I need greater faith for progress at work? Where do I need greater faith? Where I need to put pressure on the word of God to produce for me? Because the word of God must produce for you this season in the name of Jesus. Now, Jesus said, there are people with no faith, there are people with little faith. Mark 4 and verse 40. The Bible says, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? What was going on here? Uh, when you backtrack a bit to maybe verse 38 or so of Mark chapter 4, you see that, that the, the disciples were in the boat. The Bible says, and he was in the inner part of the ship, asleep, talking about Jesus, on the pillow, and they awake him and say to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? This is King James. And uh, verse 39, and he arose and rebuked the wind. The wind was very strong, but Jesus was sleeping in the ship. His disciples were afraid, and they went to meet him. Don't you care that we perish? And he arose, the Bible says in verse 9, and rebuked the wind. Uh, verse 39, he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And in verse 40, he looked at them, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? No faith. So it's possible for somebody to be without faith at all. And how do you, uh, what, what, what is the, uh, the pointer? the SI unit of measurement. Uh, how do you measure, you know, and gauge somebody who has no faith? Look at what the disciples did. One, they confessed negative. They thought they were going to perish. They exemplify full unbelief. They refused to use their own authority on their own. They absolutely and totally depended on Christ to bail them out. And as a New Testament believer, God expects that I use my faith and not absolutely depend on somebody. So if my pastor is not there, if my prayer partner is not there, if my connect group leader is not there, uh, 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 for, for those who have uh, you know, praying parents, if my parents are not there, 
if my mom is not there, what, 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 what is going to become of my life? Jesus looked at them. If he did not rise from the inner part of the ship to come and rebuke that wind, they would have perished. They would have perished. If he wasn't there at all, they wouldn't have been able to undo the wind and the waves at all. And in life, life will always throw curve balls, you know, at all sometimes. The wind and the waves will come to test the metal of the foundation of your faith and my faith. And when that happens, what's my response? What is my response? The response is it to run from pillar to post looking for who will come and help you to rebuke the wind. Jesus said, that kind of person has no faith. The person that can imagine that I will be here and yet maybe they will perish has no faith. And who can say it out? Because faith is released through the word that we speak and the actions that we, we take. That's how we measure faith. We can see unbelief in your action. We can see unbelief in the words coming out of your mouth. Jesus saw both in the life of his disciples and he said, how is it that you have no faith? So ladies and gentlemen, it's possible for you to be without faith at all. Jesus also dealt with some other people, a second category, and he, he, he called them people of little faith. Matthew uh, uh, chapter 6 and verse 30. He was describing our relationship with God here. Uh, and he was talking about uh, he said, now, if God so clothed, verse 30 of Matthew chapter 6, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? My sister, who is, you know, uh, fretting so much about the fact that your wardrobe is outdated since the, you know, the pandemic, I've not been able to change my wardrobe. Oh, and now I'm going back to work and I, I don't have enough money. Jesus said to talk to you today. Or that person who has a deadline financially is to talk to you today. That God meets, you know, the needs of the lilies of the valley, the birds of the air, the grass that is uh, up today and down tomorrow that has no real relationship with God. But you who are in the covenant with God, how do you think he will abandon you? And it, he called them, O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. Someone of little faith is the one that has, a, a, you know, a belief, a trust, but is struggling to act it out fully. Is struggling to say it fully. Is struggling to act it out fully. In Matthew 16, when you read verse 8 also, that Jesus was talking to his disciples be, be, before then, he was tell, telling them to be careful of the, the, the yeast of the Pharisee. And he was talking about, you know, the, the pranks, the, the, the lies of the Pharisee, uh, the things the, 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 you know, the things that the Pharisees are throwing out there that may be confusing to people. Uh, but they, they started thinking that Jesus was talking about bread. And Jesus was thinking, well, how, how will you think I'm talking about bread? Bread is not my problem. In verse 8 there of Matthew 16, the Bible says, but Jesus... Being aware of it, said to them, O ye of little faith, why do you reason among yourself? Because you have, you have not brought no bread. Uh, do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of, of uh, 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 the, the, remember the, the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you picked up? The time that I fed the 5,000 and you picked up many baskets? No, the seven loaves of the 4,000 that I turned to feed 4,000 people, and how many large baskets you picked up? How is it, <laughs> how is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? The Bible says, then they understood that it did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. You know, the moment Jesus started talking about something that has to do with uh, baking and all that, they thought he was talking about bread. Sometimes, you, how you get little faith is that people who almost get into a, a, you know, a panic attack just because of, of something little, a little need, a little doubt, they're already thinking, so how is it going to work? We know it has worked before. Jesus has to remind them, the last time we had to feed 4,000, I only needed five loaves, and I did it. So this, I'm not talking about you know, bread here, I'm talking about something that requires your understanding or doctrine of the Pharisee. So, that, that people with little faith <laughs> uh, in, in Mark, Mark chapter, ch 
chapter 5, in Mark chapter 5, there was a, another example of, of a, a person with, with, you know, with, with, with little faith, uh, Jarius by name. Mark chapter 5, verse 23, pleading fervently uh, with him. I'm reading New Living Translation. Pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay hands on her. Heal her so she can leave. You know, there's a level of faith that says, come to my house and come and lay hands on her and heal her so she can leave. But there's another level of faith that does not depend on Jesus showing up. And that's the third level of faith, which is great faith. It doesn't depend on Jesus showing up. It doesn't depend on anybody being present. It doesn't depend on, you know, anything like that. While Jairus was still begging Jesus to go with him, and Jesus said, okay, I will go with you, since this is the level of your faith. Whilst they were going, the Bible says in verse 25, uh, verse 24, the Bible says, Jesus went with him, and all the people followed uh, Crowd, crowding around him. Verse 25, a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd, and touch his rope. For she taught in herself. So the internal talk, the understanding, and the action is what separates little faith from great faith. Can I say that one more time? The internal conversation of a person, the understanding that is demonstrated, the action that is, that, 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 that is taken, Based on this internal conversation is what separates great faith from little faith. Because Jairus was taking Jesus to his house so that he can heal the daughter. The woman with the issue of blood did not say anything to Jesus. She was speaking to herself. A Her conversation was based on covenant promises that the Messiah will heal. And when they said Jesus was going there, they said, no, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She taught the hem of his garment. She was the, the, the flow of blood says Jesus felt that virtue left him and he looked back. Who touched me? The disciples were laughing. How, how can you say who touched me? When people were thronging, you know, uh, all around and all that and you're saying who touched me? And he knew that somebody that taught me with great faith. Yeah. In verse, verse 30 there of, of Mark chapter 5, Jesus realized at once that, heal, that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who taught my rope? Who taught my rope? Who taught my rope? <laughs> and disciples were wondering, like I said, Jesus knew something had happened. The woman knew something had happened. Great faith, you know, had been, uh, had been displayed. And I love what Jesus said in verse 34, after all the argument back and forth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. For everyone that will release your faith this season, that will press to grow your faith in one area or the other, you will see the end of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. The end of God will be extended towards you. Your suffering shall be over in the name of Jesus. You will go in peace into your marriage. You will see peace, the peace of God in your businesses in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why we're calling you this season. To, 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 to have a stronger faith. And you see what happened? While that was going on, they came from Jairus' house to tell him, don't bother the master again. Yeah, your, your daughter is now dead. That's verse 35 of Mark chapter 5. There's no use troubling the teacher now. You know, your daughter is now dead. That's what he told Jairus. The woman that intercepted created a bit of sin. There was a bit of time lapsed and the daughter passed. But Jesus told Jairus in verse 36 there, but Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. Don't be afraid, just have faith. Just have faith or have more faith, if I can put it that way. Because Jairus only had a little before to say, come to my house. The woman with the issue of blood demonstrated great faith. 
Jesus told Jairus, don't be afraid. Only have faith. Because eventually, uh, Jesus followed Jairus and healed or raised the, the, the Jairus' daughter from, from the dead. Now, as I start to wrap this all up, I need some, for somebody to understand that a lack of faith can be a limitation to what God can do in and through our individual lives. A lack of faith can be, uh, you know, an hindrance, a limitation to what God can do. Romans 1 and verse 17 in the Amplified Translation, the Bible says, For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith. That's what King James says, from faith to faith. We're supposed to be moving from faith to faith, springing from faith and leading to faith. Springing from faith and leading to faith. Every time I demonstrate faith in God and I get a result, it's leading to greater faith. It's leading to more faith. Yeah. Springing from faith and leading to faith. Disclosed in a way that awakens more faith. As it is written. And forever remains written. The just and upright shall live by faith. The just and upright shall live by faith. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. So great faith. Great faith. And how do I move to great faith? We've spoken about no faith, little faith. Great faith, like the one demonstrated by the woman with the issue of blood. How do I move into great faith? In Matthew 8 and verse 10, the Bible says, When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Surely, I said to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And he was talking about the centurion. The centurion was different from Jairus. Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, who was supposed to be a religious man, came to meet Jesus in Mark uh, uh, chapter 5 that we read earlier on and said, follow me to my house that my daughter may be healed. Now, uh, a centurion came, a Roman who is not even a Jew, a centurion, but had an understanding. May God give you understanding this season. May, May your understanding move to the next level in the name of Jesus. The crucial role of understanding in attaining great faith, cannot be overemphasized. Understanding how the, the principles that gov- govern this world, understanding the kingdom, understanding the word of God, will launch your faith to the next level. This guy was able to create a parallel between uh, uh, God's principle when it comes to s- the power of s- the spoken word and the way he demonstrates authority as a soldier. And he put the both side by side. And he was able to say, look, based on the understanding that I have of how things work in the natural, I know also the way things will work in the spirit. And I know that this, uh, uh, this can, 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 can turn things around for me. So Jesus, th- this guy came before Jesus and he just opposes the understanding of the natural military command that he had with the, when you say you have authority in the spirit and then authority in the natural, he put them side by side and he was able to demonstrate faith through it. Can I speak to somebody today? That to move from little faith to great faith, you need more understanding. You need more understanding. You need more understanding. Understanding is, uh, you know, superior power of discernment enlightened intelligence. That's understanding. Knowledge of or familiarity with a particular thing. Skill in dealing with or handling something. That's understanding. This guy said, I'm a soldier. I understand authority. Most believers don't understand authority. That's why you tremble before demons. If you understand authority and the Bible says you are seated in a higher place than principalities and powers, then you will not run away from witches and wizards and run away from demons. Based on the understanding of authority, you, when you meet a policeman on the road, maybe at, uh, at an intersection where there's no traffic light and the policeman uh, is a traffic warder, uh, and he says stop, and he's wearing a uniform, based on the authority of the sovereign state that he represents, he's saying stop. You have to stop. Yeah, you have to stop. You're driving on the highway, and you just hear the siren of a police officer. Oh, you know immediately that you need to pull over. So you have to pull over. That's to signal you to pull over. 
that there's a way it happens in the spirit that if you understand it that way, when you also show up, you know demons are pulling over. They're pulling over. They're pulling over. They're pulling, the spirit of infirmity will pull over when you show up. But when you show up with that, under, with that understanding, your authority may not work. Jesus looked at the, the, the centurion. Based on how he described it, he said, I'm a man under authority. I said to one, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. And based on that, Jesus described his faith as great faith. Can you go to uh, Matthew uh, uh, 8? Uh, yeah, Matthew 8 and verse 9 said, For I, am, I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Yeah. So how will I not have Jesus to come to my house? Just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. <laughs> speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. And verse 10, uh, uh, Jesus was amazed. The Bible says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Great faith, great faith, great faith, great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Spiritual things are not arbitrary. Yeah. I say that again. Spiritual things are not arbitrary. They are based on certain laws. Laws produce predictable outcome. That's what it does. Predictable outcome. When you understand spiritual principles, when you dig into the word of God, you understand spiritual principles, your faith is based on those principles and it produces results predictably for you. The more understanding you have of spiritual laws, the more confident your application of great faith. The more understanding you have of spiritual laws, the more confident. For instance, when you, have, when you understand the law of sowing and reaping, when you have seed in the ground, your faith is, you know, is, is strengthened to expect unusual harvest because you understand the principle. Somebody who wants to move from Little faith, no faith, or whatever, to great faith, you need to step into principles. You need to get into spiritual understanding. When you understand the principles uh, that govern marriage, naked and not ashamed, leave and cleave, according to all in Genesis, the book of the beginning, then your faith becomes stronger that your marriage will work. If I can be naked and not ashamed, if I can be transparent, which is a great principle for biblical marriage, if I can leave and cleave, then I know there's no reason for any devil to put his hand in my marriage and be successful. Say amen, somebody. Understanding is very critical. It's very, very critical. It's very critical to great faith. Yeah. Because when you have that understanding, you walk in great faith, you understand that great faith is confident. Confident. Trusting God. Trusting his promises. Great faith is unwavering and persistent. Persistent because it's based on principle. If the heart remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So even if my harvest is not coming now, it's going to come. So I'm going to be persistent. Great faith is humble, totally submitted to the will of God, totally submitted to the ways of God. That's how great faith works. The three Hebrew boys, they, they said, no, we're not going to bow. We're only going to bow to God. Yeah, we're not going to bow. Great faith is persistent, is humble, and you see God show up. Yeah, when God told Adam, I mean Abraham, to send away Agar and the bond woman and her son, great faith humbles him to be able to say, I will obey God. And then what happened was God, you know, fulfilled his word in his life. Great faith is never offended with God. Never offended with God. Yeah. Great faith is never offended, you know, in God. When David uh, uh, committed adultery and God took that, that son away from him, he just rose up, washed himself. Great faith. No offense in God. God is God. We move on. Ruth, in the book of Ruth, when you read chapter 1 and chapter 2, Ruth losing her husband did not make her become, you know, recalcitrant and blaming God. Great faith is tenacious. Great faith is looking for the next instruction by God because you know that all things are working together for your good. Ruth uh, may have lost her husband, but God has a greater plan. And great faith is resilient. 
looking for another opportunity to hear from God, to walk with God. One husband may have been gone, but God still has a Boaz who will connect Ruth to the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. And for everyone listening to me today, I need you to understand that it's time for you to build great faith that will not crumble. You know, that will not crumble in the face of affliction. That will always look for the next instruction. Great faith is never offended with God. Great faith helps us to see the future and participate in its actualization. That's what it does. It helps you, positions you to see the future and to be able to participate in its actualization. That was how come Ruth in Ruth chapter, chapter 1 there well, you know, became very frantic about, I'm, I'm going to go with this woman. I'm not going to leave Naomi. Great faith connects you with your next level. I pray for somebody, this second half of 2021, that your faith will connect you with your next level in God. Your faith will no longer fail in the name of the Lord Jesus. As I wrap this all up today, I need somebody to, 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 you know, to understand we're just starting this new series uh, and it's going to build your faith like never before. Every promise, every prophecy spoken at the last conference. Yeah, if you, have, if you weren't in the part of it, please get on our YouTube channel and binge watch. And, you know, you have to release your faith to see those things come to pass in your life. The next time you sit to read the Bible, if there's anything that looks like God is speaking to me through this word, it's time for you to see to the actualization of the word that God has, the promise, the promise that God has for you in his word. The Bible says every promise of the word of God, they are yea and amen in Christ. God fulfills his promises. And I am supposed to fight a good fight of faith. A good fight of faith uh, is, is, is a fight uh, uh, to fulfill prophecies. Uh, 1 Timothy 1 and verse 18, New King James Version, it says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by then you may wage a good warfare. A good warfare is a warfare that's based on prophecies spoken, on promises of the word of God. Promises and prophecies are the things that we wage a good warfare with until we see the actualization of these things in our lives. So, God who promised cannot lie. His words come to pass. Am I going to stay in faith and continue to build my faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10 and 17. So you, you, you need to stay with the word this season. Keep hearing. Keep listening. Keep confessing. Keep meditating on the word of God. Fight a good warfare based on covenant promises and the prophetic utterances that, that you believe. And, and you're going to see the hand of God uh, come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. Will you lift your two hands with me today and bless the name of Jesus and say, Father, I'm moving from no faith uh, to great faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree this season that your faith will no longer fail. Say, bring amen somebody. Speak to God today and just ask him, Father, give me grace to build my faith this season. Bring the right word in my way. Give me grace to research, to understand principles of the word of God that will build my faith. I am tired of no faith uh, in my relational life. I am tired of no faith uh, in the health of my body. I, I, I am building great faith this season in the name of the Lord Jesus. Great faith, great faith, great faith. Uh, somebody, this morning, it's time for you to take charge of the words of your mouth and declare that this season, I will only speak faith-filled words in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if you can say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and you shall not doubt in your heart. He said, you shall have whatever you say. Mark 11, 22, 23, you shall have whatever you say. Somebody declare this season, the power of God comes upon my lips. I only say faith-filled words in the name of Jesus. The hold of fear, the hold of unbelief uh, is broken over my heart. In the name of Jesus, declare my faith is growing this season. My faith will not fail. I see the hand of God over my life producing uh, great things, uh, great exploits, true great faith in the name of Jesus. Will you release your faith with me this morning as you prophesy with your own mouth over your household, over your business, over your family, and begin to declare right now, the word of God is working in my house in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, none shall be barren, none shall cast their young. That is 
uh, the experience of my home in the name of Jesus. He said, before I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed beg for bread. Will you declare it if you have a need right now? I will not beg for bread. My God is making a way where there seems to be no way. He's a way maker and he's always there for me. Somebody speak to God today. Speak to God today. Speak to God today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We give you glory and we give you praise. In the precious name of Jesus. So, Father, you sent your word. And your word heals them and delivers them from all their destructions. We ask, Father, based on today's word, release grace upon somebody to move from no faith or little faith to great faith that is needed for this season. That the sons and daughters may move to the next level in their experience with you. Thank you, because our faith will no longer fail, but it will bring real results in Jesus' precious name. And I say a big amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Come on, somebody put your hands together, celebrate Jesus today, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. And uh, uh, before I wrap this all up, finally, I want to pray for anyone who may be saying, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to give my life to Christ. Now that my faith has been challenged, I know for me to uh, be able to grow in this faith, I must start with a relationship with God. Or maybe you said a prayer before, but you backslid into sin. I need you to understand that God wants you closer, wants you closer. As you come closer to him, your faith will be rekindled, your understanding will be replenished, and you are able to work with him better and stronger. Uh, would you like to say a prayer with me today? If you don't mind, if you don't mind, can you put your right hand on your heart and let's say a prayer together. And somebody, can you say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness for my sins. So I ask that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I receive you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Come into my life. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning with you from this moment forward. In Jesus' name. And somebody say, believe in amen. If you just said that prayer with me, can you go to the chat room? or the comments, and let us know, I just gave my life to Christ, or I'm rededicating my life to Christ. Please let us know the decision that you have made. If you're watching this on TV, you have our email and WhatsApp number. Please send us a, a, a message. Let us know that you just made a decision. We'd love to send you a link with which you can download some of our materials that will help you to build your faith. We also want to connect with you and see how, uh, how we can help you to become stronger as a believer. So if you're on any of our platforms, social media platforms, you get a link from my colleagues there, our ministers there, please make sure uh, that you connect with them. Uh, click on that link, fill the form with accurate information. We'd love to connect with you and send you some more information after now that will help you to build great faith. Praise God. Also, we'd love to lead us as we give to God today. Uh, if you are on this, uh, any of our platforms or on, on, on TV, and you love to give to God, uh, today, I, I, I love for you uh, to bring out your devices that many ways we give at the Elevation Church and it's going to be displayed on the screen right now. We believe that giving is part of our worship and we don't want to ever uh, uh, appear before God empty. And as you give today, I pray that the hand of God will rest upon you, rest upon your finances, rest upon your businesses, uh, your career, uh, your, your storehouse will not run dry. The God of all grace, it will multiply grace unto you and cause abundance to be the portion of your home in the precious name of Jesus. I pray for you uh, that the favor of God will visit everything you lay your hands upon. They will prosper like never before. Uh, and as many as have financial deadlines, I pray that God will meet you at every point of need and cause his face to shine upon you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Again, thank you for giving to God today. I will believe that God who says in secret, he will reward you openly in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for staying with us today. I pray that this new week will be your best so far this year. And this second half of the year will bring increase of favor, increase of faith, increase of grace, and unusual results into your life in Jesus' precious name. Have a great week and God bless you. What a great time it has been in God's presence today. If you would like to share your thoughts and experiences from the service, please subscribe to our social media channels at Elevation LDN and also receive prompt updates about our other upcoming activities and events.
Our weekly fasting and prayer meetings holds every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Prayer guidelines will be shared on all our social media handles. Please use the link now showing to join the meeting. Do share your testimonies via email to testimony at elevationuk.org. We would love to hear about what God is doing in your life. Please remember to visit our website, elevationuk.org to get to know more about us and for information about our events and services. God bless you and have a great week. The Elevation Church means a lot to me, a whole lot, even more than I can put in words, really. Um, but here I, I found family, I found home, I found a community of people that actually care. I've been able to build relationships with people through the Connect group. That I am where I am today, it's because of the tutelage, because of the leadership, because of what I have heard from the pupils. And I found out that the things that I was praying to God about, you know, trusting God for, they were being addressed as I was going for service on a consistent basis. I've had answered prayers, people have joined me in prayers and I've seen things working. My spiritual life has developed a lot. Elevation is not a church where they will force you to do stuff. You won't know when you start doing things. You know, it's one thing to be in a place and actually be vulnerable and then not feel judged, but then from being vulnerable, people make you better. I thank God for my journey you know, since I joined the Elevation Church, things have turned around for me. I've experienced, you know, acceleration in my job. Elevation Church is um, like a conscience that picks you every day. My Elevation experience is a beautiful one. I am enjoying God. This is really where I should have been all the while. And I'm happy that I am here at this time. And I would always be here. I would not go anywhere. It's Elevation Church or New Order.